America, welcome to the 59th presidential inauguration. By the dawn's early light. We will get through this together. Was blind, but now I see. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president. That I will faithfully execute. So help me God. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. Thanks for joining us. During his first hours on the job, President Joe Biden has signed a series of executive orders. His first action was to impose a mask mandate on federal property and install a coronavirus response coordinator to oversee efforts to distribute vaccines and medical supplies. President Biden has also stopped funding for President Trump's border wall, reversed his travel ban targeting largely Muslim countries, and reversed several of Trump's attempts to withdraw from international agreements, beginning the process of rejoining the Paris Climate Accords and stopping the United States departure from the World Health Organization. One of his executive orders is already getting pushback from Republicans in Wisconsin. Amy Reid joins us now to explain why our congressional delegation is speaking out in favor of the Keystone Pipeline. Amy. Well, President Trump brought this pipeline back to life after Obama killed the project in 2015, and now President Biden is ending it again. Wisconsin's Republicans in Congress sent a letter to Biden today supporting completion of the oil pipeline, saying it would lower gas prices and create jobs. The project also goes through indigenous land in the U.S. and furthers fossil fuel use. Representative Scott Fitzgerald appealed to the down economy, saying in a statement, President Biden has an opportunity to signal that access to good-paying jobs in a, is a truly a priority for his administration by reconsidering his decision to stop construction of the Keystone XL pipeline. In his speech today, Biden said he wants to be a president for all Americans and he wants to tackle challenges we face, including climate change. Representative Mark Pocan told me he hopes that unity message resonates in Congress. You know, if we can just get back to, again, normal, where, you know, we may have different ideologies, but as long as you have some values that you can find what you have in common and get something done, that's what people really, at the end of the day, want us to do. Um, I think people are looking forward to something maybe a little more boring. But boring we might not get. Republicans use that unity message against Biden already today. Both Congressman Style and Grothman saying the Keystone move isn't unifying or moderate. The planned armed protest the FBI warned all capital cities about never happened here in Madison. Window boards and roadblocks surrounding the capital are still in place. The Department of Administration can't say how much longer they'll be up because they don't comment on security plans for safety reasons. Madison Police Interim Chief Vic Wall says the department will continue to be on alert for the coming days. Let's check your first warned forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? Well, temperatures started out cold this morning, but they've been warming up ever since. The live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison shows a pretty nice evening. We've had uh, sunshine for much of the day. Last night, we dropped to five degrees in Madison, but it was down to zero at the Dells. One below zero in Lone Rock and zero in Platteville for some of the colder temperatures around. But take a look where the temperatures have come up since then. Right now, Madison at our high for the day of 27. Temperatures are in the 30s out to the west of us. La Crosse almost at 40 degrees. Our temperatures will rise up a few more degrees through the evening hours before they start falling later on tonight. And winds are also pretty gusty out of the south. So even though temperatures have been warming up, the wind chills are still in the teens and single digits to the east of Madison. To the west, those temperature or the wind chills are a little more tolerable since the temperatures are warmer. Look for those temperatures to peak around 10 p.m. and then just very slowly fall overnight. So by tomorrow morning, we'll be down to around 27 degrees. Look for some sunshine tomorrow morning and then more clouds later on in the afternoon. It'll be breezy with a high of 33. Later on, I'll take a look at a forecast that includes colder weather for Friday and Saturday and accumulating snow by Sunday. Gary, thank you. Lawyers for a Greene County teen accused of killing his newborn daughter are asking for his case to be moved to juvenile court. Right now, 16-year-old Logan Crookenberg Anderson is being charged as an adult with first-degree intentional homicide and hiding a corpse. Prosecutors say he admitted to taking his infant daughter into the woods and fatally shooting her. He's expected back in court next month. The DHS Vaccine Committee has voted to include all K-12 through teachers and staff, child welfare and social workers, and food chain workers to the Phase 1B group. So that includes grocery store workers who were not originally part of this plan. The subcommittee reversed itself after receiving 1,700 public comments from the grocery industry. Tim Metcalf tells us they're excited that the subcommittee reconsidered. We're 
one of those essential workers that those industries that has so many customer contacts. Uh, our stores alone, we have 25,000 people go through each one of our stores a week. So the, the, the chance of exposure is so great uh, for these workers. So it's really important to get these workers vaccinated. Public transit, utility workers, and other essential workers may also make the cut along with prisoners and correctional workers. Next, the 1B recommendations go to the full committee, the DHS secretary, and then the governor. The chairman of the Wisconsin Assembly Health Committee is proposing that a COVID vaccine be available to the general public by mid-March rather than June as health officials estimate. Representative Joe Sanfilippo outlined the highlights of his bill today during a public hearing. Those include allowing individual vaccinators who have finished one phase of eligible individuals to move to the next and requiring DHS to present a plan to the legislature for how they plan to roll out the vaccine to the entire state. The deadline he is setting is next week on Thursday. The federal government also came out last week and said future allotments on, vaccina on vaccines to states are going to be based on what you're actually getting in their arms. So if we continue to drag our feet and, and not get the vaccinations that we've been allotted into people's arms, that's only going to hurt us for future allotments going forward. Now, the bill is unlikely to become law. It has to pass the Senate and Assembly and be signed by the governor. Doctors would like you to get a COVID vaccine, but they can't make you do it. Some people in Rock County feel they don't even have a choice. Their employer says get the shot or get laid off. Adam Duxter looked into the requirement and if the county is considering a change. Nurses and CNAs at Rockhaven Nursing Home in Janesville have taken care of at-risk people for almost a year. But a decision made last month pushed some over the edge. I just kind of looked at her and said, really, everyone? Michelle Lynch could not believe that if she refused to get the COVID-19 vaccination, she could lose her job at the county-run home. If it would have been okay voluntarily at first, I think a lot of people would have receive the vaccine, but because it's told it's mandatory, a lot of people are fighting that. She says so far, nearly a dozen staff have quit, retired, or been laid off because of this requirement, which the chairman of the County Human Services Board wasn't aware of until he heard the complaints. That's not fair. Um, not when the state isn't mandating this on people yet. There's other health systems that haven't mandated it and forced it on their employees. And right now, Wisconsin's DHS says Rockhaven is actually within its rights to do this, saying any employer can mandate its employees get the vaccine as long as there is religious and medical exemptions in place. Lynch says she's worried what could happen to the quality of care if more people choose to leave. We're going to be short staffed in accounting and the finance department and the CNA, the, the nursing. Knudsen says he's determined to address the rule at the next county board meeting January 28th. I don't think it's... It's fair to proceed laying off people. I also don't think that it's fair on the other staff that are being doubled up on work potentially because now they're minus workers. In Rock County, Adam Duxter, News 3 Now. Other county-run nursing homes in Green and Dane counties are not mandating staff to get the COVID-19 vaccine, but are strongly encouraging it. Coming up next, it takes a conservative law firm files another lawsuit against the governor's latest public health order. We'll have more details just ahead. Stay with us. At iMart Express, it's just the right price. Two pairs of glasses start under 40 bucks. Using insurance? We accept over a thousand plans, and using your benefits is as easy as one, two, three. No insurance? No problem. Glasses to fit your budget. It's just the right price. Only at iMart Express. Is your credit score getting in the way of the things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit offer fast and flexible lending. Borrow up to $10,000 and choose repayment terms that work for you. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home, or the blistering heat of summer without power, then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. Keep a neighbor in crisis safely in their home during these difficult times by supporting and donating to the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today. 
If your bathroom is dull and outdated, then it's time for a change. Give us a call here at Mad City Baths, your trusted local source for high quality baths, walk in showers and walk in tubs installed in as little as one day. Modern, easy access designs infused with microband to prevent bacteria, mold and mildew. And remember, we're Wisconsin's number one rink remodeler, Mad City, your window and bath partner of the Green Bay Packers. And now you can take advantage of the 60-60-60 sale. 60% off installation, 60 months zero interest, senior military and previous customer discounts, $60 Walmart gift card with your purchase, and a $100 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate from Mad City. Call 608-729-4466. Let me give you that number again. 608-729-4466. MadCityBaz.com. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Gatherings are restricted and many businesses are held well short of capacity in Dane County, but a group is trying again to change that. The Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty filed a lawsuit this morning to overturn the current public health order that limits indoor gatherings to 10 people. Brady Mallory joins us with a closer look at the lawsuit and reaction from both sides. Brady? Well, this is actually pretty similar to a lawsuit the group filed back in November. The Wisconsin Supreme Court ruled 4-3 to three against the first lawsuit. This current effort argues public health Madison Dane County had no right to issue order number 12. Instead, the county board should have had a vote. Two people from Dane County who were part of the previous lawsuit filed today's. One of their arguments is how the health order negatively affects sporting events in southern Wisconsin. The group's attorney says this is an attempt to give the people of Dane County a voice. It allows input. It allows uh, accountability, transparency, and hopefully deliberation about which restrictions are appropriate. Uh, obviously, it's a hard decision to make uh, what restrictions are appropriate, but there are costs and benefits. And right now, uh, the people of Dane County have no opportunity to explain the costs. Madison's mayor is responding to the lawsuit and says it undermines efforts to keep people safe. Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway says anytime people gather, there is an opportunity for the virus to spread, which prolongs the pandemic. Without gathering limits, we believe this number would be even higher and the virus would be spreading more. There's no clear timeline on when we could get a ruling, but Berg guesses it could be in the next few weeks. Brady, thank you. And coming up next at 6, a new book is preserving the history and beauty of the murals local artists created on boarded up state street businesses this summer. We'll hear from the creators who want this to be a tool to keep racial justice conversations ongoing. And some windy, colder days are on the way. Gary will have your complete first one forecast. Get more for your kitchen now at the Brothers Main Big Kitchen Upgrade Sale. We want you to absolutely love your new kitchen, so you'll get big, big savings on the latest incredible products from GE and our risk-free 30-day price satisfaction guarantee. We want you to be 100% satisfied every time. That's why we're the Moore Store. The Big Kitchen Upgrade Sale with more selection, more savings, and more kitchen. Now at the Brothers Main, your local store for more since 1938. The Modern Farmhouse look is here to stay, and we have it for less at Slumberland Furniture. Start out with neutrals. Use a beige or light gray sofa as your base to build on. Next, mix and match metals and wood. Try adding contrast by using light with dark. Finally, add home style pillows and unique farmhouse accessories. Play around and have fun. Get your current look for less at Slumberland Furniture. With over 50,000 satisfied customers, Mad City Baths is a sure choice for durable, beautiful bath and shower designs installed in as little as one day. Don't put it off any longer. Go to the phone and call in now to take advantage of Mad City Baths 60-60-60 sale. 60% 60 off installation, 60 months zero interest. And if you call today, a $60 Walmart gift card with purchase and a $100 Amazon gift card with your estimate. At Papa Murphy's, we make fresh pizza that you bake at home. Because home is where the fun is. Right now, get the herb chicken Mediterranean pizza for just $9. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. Dear all-wheel drive, I'm your new co-pilot, Camry. Let's show the road what we've got. 
snowy streets, we're coming for you. Icy grips, we're holding tight. Wintry mix, eh, safety's the name of our game. Steady, Camry all-wheel drive. Right now, you can get 0.9% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2021 Toyota Camry. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Get more local news now with Channel 3000 Plus, our free digital streaming service that brings you area news and info 24-7 from the News 3 Now team. Channel 3000 Plus. Download it today and watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. Businesses along State Street will likely eventually take down the boards that protected their walls this summer and with it would go the artwork on top. But a Madison-based company found a way to preserve that work forever. Jamie Perez explains. It wasn't paper or canvas, but plywood that offered a space for artists to share their emotions in Madison last summer. Issue um, that is so heavy, it is so complex. An issue of basic human rights that came to the forefront of society after George Floyd's death and onto the walls of State Street. It's stuck with Naira Jordan with American Family Insurance. There are individuals that have so many uh, feelings and emotions from anger to frustration to hope and love. And I think the key is that we all need to come together and talk about it. American Family Insurance wanted to know how they could be involved in the movement. The company answered a challenge from Dane County Circuit Court Judge Reverend Everett Mitchell to preserve the art. They rose to the challenge. Lays out the murals as if you're starting from the Capitol and walking down towards campus. AmFam created a new book called Let's Talk About It. It captures the raw emotions behind each mural, helping amplify the artist's message and their role in activism. It's pretty dope. I guess like from a personal point of view, like I've never had like my artwork displayed like that in like an actual book. So that was cool to see us just as like a, like a personal win, I guess. But also just like, chronicle like all the all, all the artwork on state into like a single like storybook it kind of cements it and Nathan Charlie is just one of the photographers whose work was featured Amato Chroma was another it turned out to be really something you know kind of amazing a book that dives into the issues plaguing so many communities a place where social justice is top of mind I was impressed I was, I was really, I was really impressed. Anwar Floyd Pruitt painted a couple of murals along State Street. He said to see a corporation take a stand on social justice and publish it for the world to see paints a strong example for other companies to follow. Unless there's a lot of pressure sometimes, then corporations tend to remain silent, right? Um, and so for a company or a corporation to step forward and choose to do the right thing, uh, is really is really important for news three now I'm Jamie Perez the book is available now and free to anyone who wants it if you are interested we have a link to where you can order one on channel 3000.com local women in the food and beverage industry are working to raise money to support women's health this is year four of the assorted cookie sale each box contains 21 unique cookies they'll be available February 11th and 12th just in time for Valentine's Day the effort is put together by the culinary ladies collective made up of local female chefs cooks producers and and artisans. As the Culinary Ladies Collective, we're really concerned with women in the food and beverage industries and a lot of the issues and um, negative experiences that they're facing. And so um, we just really connect it to uh, women's health. Healthcare is really challenging for women in the food and beverage industry. Proceeds from this year's fundraiser support Harambe Village. It's a group of birth professionals and doulas working to dismantle racial, class, and gender disparities. If you are interested in ordering a box, you can visit the Giant Jones Brewing Company website. Sales just started yesterday, and 400 of the available 600 boxes have already been sold. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Gary Kinalti, first warm forecast. Well, today the winds picked up out of the south and southwest. We started out cold, but those temperatures turned milder as the day went on. Three things you need to know in the forecast. The breezy conditions will continue tonight into tomorrow. Uh, temperatures will probably continue to rise for a few more hours into the lower 30s before they drop back into the upper 20s by tomorrow morning. And then for tomorrow, look for high temperatures in the lower 30s. Colder weather arrives for Friday and Saturday. High temperatures in the upper teens, but nighttime low temperatures around 10 on Friday morning and around zero on Saturday morning. Wind chills could be as cold as 10 below zero on both mornings.
mornings. And then accumulating snow is in the forecast from Saturday night into Sunday and possibly Monday as well. Temperatures right now are in the 20s in the eastern part of the Midwest, but notice out to the west, they're above freezing. Lacrosse at 38, close to 40 over southwestern Minnesota. Compared to 24 hours ago, that's a jump of 25 to 35 degrees through much of Minnesota. Upper air pattern right now is showing the cold air retreating to the north and east as that milder weather builds out to the west for us for a little bit. We see a little snap of uh, colder air come in for Friday and Saturday, but we're just kind of getting a glancing blow. The coldest air stays north of the U.S. Canadian border. Then the jet stream becomes more southwesterly as we head into Sunday, and we see the temperature contrast setting up to our west. That's a situation that could get a winter storm going, so we'll keep a close eye because the storm could develop in this area, a very favorable position with the jet stream in place, and then after the storm passes, we turn a little colder, but notice those temperatures actually starting to warm up again toward the end of next week. On weather track right now, just a little band of clouds to our north and west that will come through this evening. Some snow flurries farther to the north and west that could drop in here tomorrow evening. Otherwise, we have a warm front cutting across Wisconsin. You can see on the other side of that warm front, temperatures are in the 30s and 40s, but even behind the cold front, the temperatures drop, don't drop off that rapidly. It'll be a little while before the cold air settles in. So look for skies to clear out overnight. Then for tomorrow, we'll see morning sunshine, more clouds in the afternoon, maybe a few flurries tomorrow evening. Then we'll clear out and turn colder with northwesterly winds as we head into Friday and Friday night and Saturday. Notice the winds very light Saturday, uh, Saturday morning with the high pressure almost right over us. Then out to the west, those winds pick up out of the south. The clouds start to move in by Saturday afternoon. That's when we have the potential for snow from Saturday night into Sunday. The European computer model yesterday was showing about four to six inches over southern Wisconsin. Now it's showing heavier amounts more toward the north and west. Take a look at the U.S. GFS computer model is now showing. Perhaps a much heavier snowstorm over southern Wisconsin because it's kind of, uh, or actually this is the I'm sorry, this is the European computer model. The other computer model was the, the GFS. So this bears watching. Again, I'm not going to put my, uh, my hat on a forecast like this, but still, it's something that bears watching as we head from Sunday into Monday, especially if the snow lingers into Monday. So for tomorrow, 33 for high, partly sunny skies in the morning, cloudy and breezy in the afternoon, 17 for high Friday and 18 on Saturday. Again, those temperatures on the cold side. Then as we warm up, we have the snow from Saturday night into Sunday, possibly Monday as well. And then another chance of snow about the middle of next week, but temperatures for the most part at or slightly above normal. And coming up in sports, the Packers trying to do something nobody has done to the Buccaneers since October. Beat them on the road. What Tom Brady has to say about Tampa Bay's success away from home. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. We all share the same roads, but when an accident happens, we don't always share the same consequences. Big trucks can cause big damage. Injuries can be severe and may require a lifetime of care and compensation. Call Gruber Law Offices today. We have been fighting and winning for people injured by big trucks for more than 30 years. Let us do the same for you. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Seventeen Ford Escape starting at eleven nine nine five or one eighty five per month. Golden Cars is family owned and operated for over fifty years. So just hurry in today and ask for my sister Crystal the Pistol Gobin or my brother Donovan Gobin. You gotta go to Gobin. GobinCars.com. Mad City Baths offers a double lifetime labor warranty on all of our bath and shower designs with surfaces that remain clean and fresh longer thanks to microman protection. Check out walk-in and barrier-free showers. Add grab bars, a safety seat, and more. Plus, look at this walk-in tub with relaxing hydrotherapy. And remember, you can count on Mad City Baths to do the job on time and on budget and save you a lot of money during our 60-60-60 sale. For starters, 60% off installation. And look at this, 60 months, zero interest. Senior, military, and previous customer discounts. And if you call today, last chance in this program, you get a $60 Walmart gift card with purchase and a $100 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. 
Call 608-729-4466. Let me give you that number again. 608-729-4466. MadCityBaz.com. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on NetCredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. One year of the coronavirus in the U.S. Thursday morning, we'll put the numbers into perspective. Plus, we'll show Wisconsin's top vacation spot on Airbnb. We'll see you starting at 4.30 on News 3 Now this morning. The Packers to-do list is really short this Sunday. Beat Tampa Bay and then go to Tampa. But in order for this group to do that, they have to take down one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL history and a red-hot road team. The Buccaneers are 8-2 and two on the road this year and haven't lost away from Raymond James Stadium since way back on October 8th. And Tom Brady would like nothing more than extending that winning streak in Lambeau Field. Let's keep that streak going. That would be pretty sweet, so let's get another one. It's uh, we're going to be challenged to get it because we're going up against, like I said, a great football team. I think playing on the roads just it's about good football execution, communication, all the fundamentals, the blocking, tackling, throwing, all those things. So it's a it's a great environment. I mean, this is uh, one of the coolest stadiums in the league to play in. The Pro Football Writers of America has named Aaron Rodgers its MVP for 2020. The Packers QB set single-season franchise records for passing touchdowns and completion percentage. Rodgers was also named the PFW or was also named the PFW's most valuable player in 2011 and 2014. The official AP MVP award will be announced on February 6th. After leading the Badgers in the weight room for the last six years, Ross Kalaji is now stepping into a new role. Paul Chris announced today that Kalaji is the Wisconsin's new defensive line coach. As a player at UW, he started 45 games on the D-line, playing in two Rose Bowls. This Sunday, the Wisconsin wrestling team will take the mat at the UW Fieldhouse for the first time this season. And Chris Bono's lineup isn't what we expected it to be. His best wrestler, Evan Wick, is now focusing on the Olympics, so he's not competing with the team at all this season. And either is his star-studded incoming freshman class. It's going to be a lot of young guys getting a lot of experience, uh, and we're going out there. We're probably the underdogs in every single match we'll wrestle this year, uh, which is the way we like things, right? That's the way I've always I've always enjoyed being the underdog with my teams. I can get the most out of them, uh, but uh, it's going to be a struggle this year. Uh, but these guys have done a great job. I was very happy with their effort. They're going to get better. They're going to get a lot of experience. And as expected, Wisconsin Volleyball is picked to finish first in the Big Ten ahead of Minnesota and Nebraska. The Badgers were unanimously chosen to repeat as conference champs. Both Sidney Hilly and Dana Retke were named preseason All-Big Ten. And Charlotte, with the Badgers only playing a Big Ten schedule, that means Marquette still has bragging rights from last year when they beat them 3-2. Uh-huh. We've got a lot of days to hang on to those bragging rights, too. <laughs> They'll take it in volleyball. They've got the basketball bragging rights right now. Let's go to Gary. Final check of the forecast. The temperatures are warming up out to the west, so expect that 27-degree reading in Madison to continue to increase a bit over the evening hours. We'll probably end up in the lower 30s. Winds, though, still pretty brisk out of the southwest, dropping wind chills to the teens from Madison to the east. They're in the 20s to the west of us. Look for a low of about 27 by tomorrow morning, high tomorrow of 33, and then some snow on the way for the end of the weekend. All right, Gary, thanks. Thanks for joining us for News for Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.